Hello again. Hello, it's Adam here. And just a quick point on the whole God thing. So, uh, one of the more popular videos on this channel uh, was talking about 100% proof God isn't real. And um, I just wanted to do uh, some more thoughts on the whole God issue. One that um, isn't brought up too often, although it's a fairly common one as to why I don't particularly feel that there is a God. Or not, at least the gods that we're presented with, which kind of touches on the point. Which God is God? Uh, you, you hear sometimes you hear people say, "Oh, there's like like, like an all-encompassing thing." So, oh, Muslims, Christians, Zoroastrians, and all, all of this sort of paraphernalia. At least with the monotheistic conceptions of God, they're all pathways to God that we can all find our own way to God, which is all fine and dandy. And by the way, this this isn't me saying this. This is just how it is. But the problem with that kind of thinking and the problem with the whole oh well it's okay that there's different uh, religions and different pathways to God and different conceptions of God uh, it just goes to show that there probably is a God no it doesn't what it means is is that there's contradictory conceptions of God and that you know, they're mutually exclusive so you can't be a Christian and a Muslim at the same time you can't believe in the tenets of one faith and then accept that another faith is a pathway towards God. Don't get me wrong, in Islam, uh, Jews and Christians uh, were known, are known as people of the book, so people of the Old Testament, and people of the Bible, and they are acknowledged as following a flawed version of Islam, at least in Islam, so they are related um, in some ways, but in some stricter interpretations of that faith, you either believe those particular tenants and believe that God is a particular way or whatever or you're going to hell or you're wrong basically so there's no way around a lot a lot of these different uh, religions that look at God and say oh well this is how God is this is our story of what God is if you believe in these specific tenants about God and what God did and what God wants you to do and who you should sleep with and all this kind of stuff then uh, you either believe that or you're wrong at least from that perspective it's very dogmatic it's very my way or the highway and that, that there therein lies the problem of all of these different religions who claim to know that not only does god exist but god is this particular way or god is explained in this particular way god has this particular story so the god of the old testament for example as opposed to another conception of God. So there are other monotheistic, uh, I think Zoroastrianism is one, so that's a different uh, a form of monotheism as opposed to Judaism, uh, Islam, and, and uh, the Christian God, although uh, they are known as the, at least the latter three are known as the Abrahamic faiths. But it's interesting when you think about it because you have all of these different religions and you could in that respect say, oh yeah, well, why are there so many religions? Why do so many people believe that God exists? Surely there must be something to it. Fair enough. Uh, um, that's, that's cool and everything. But then to me, it always goes back to the whole mutual exclusivity thing. So you can't believe in one uh, um, and believe in all of the others at the same time. Doesn't make any sense, does it? And I always think of, of, of like history, so I'm a bit of a history nerd and I'm just aware that, uh, especially in the Middle Ages, I mean, look at the Middle Ages in Europe, you see all the religious wars, different forms of Christianity, you have the, the, the Reformation and then the religious wars in Europe, where both sides believe just as fervently in their interpretation of the Christian faith. And also just generally in history. So imagine living in the, the heady days of the Roman Empire or the late Roman, Roman Republic and the Roman pantheon of gods. All of those men and women just as fervently believed in Jupiter uh, and uh, all of those gods of that pantheon. They were polytheistic believers. They, they would have believed just as fervently. They would have sacrificed. They would have believed that those sacrifices had effects and that they please the gods or at least um, help them win battles and with their daily things and stuff like that they all had crazy religious religious practices and beliefs pertaining to a pantheon of gods their polytheistic beliefs back then they they were just as fervently believers in that form of faith that gods really did exist that god gods really did affect their daily lives the romans were very serious about that kind of thing so they would um not hold votes on certain days and 
under certain conditions. On some occasions, if there was like a thunderbolt in the sky and there was supposed to, there was a vote scheduled in the public assembly, which is where bills were rat rat ratified into law and you had like certain conditions or, or the omens were wrong or you had a lightning bolt in the sky or something crazy thing like that. They took those sorts of things seriously. They really believed in that stuff. And I don't see any logical reason why we should discount the fervent beliefs of that time and that would have been the mainstream belief, but like in the Roman Empire, in the territory commanded by the Roman Republic, you would have had a, a plethora of different religions, but that would have been the dominant religion, or at least the religion of the domineering class of people, the Roman people, the Senate and people of Rome. So that would have been a widespread belief. Uh, many people would have believed in it, just as, uh, at least in that context, and proportionately, just as Christianity and Islam is today. It's just a matter of scaling it up. And I don't see logically why one form of belief has more validity than another when the people that believed in both sets of beliefs just as fervently believe it, just as would just as die hard say, oh, well, this is true. You should believe the true faith. And that's it. And that goes for all, all of these different areas. I mean, you go to the ancient Greek world, ancient Athens or Sparta, they would have believed in the Greek pantheon. They would have believed Zeus was as real as... Christians today believe that God is real, that it's just it's just a fact, in their minds at least, according to their own personal experience. So that's the main problem I have with it. Uh, I think uh, commonly it's called the many gods problem. So you have lots of different gods, some, of, some conceptions of God, where they say, oh, God exists and he's this way. God exists and we explain God this way. And he wants you to believe this, that and the other. And if you don't, then you're punished or you won't receive eternal bliss and things like that so that that's the other main problem that i've never really gotten over personally again it's just all opinion and i'm just um pulling it out of my posterior but it's just an opinion on personally why i'm not buying into the whole god's existence thing not necessarily an argument per se against god's existence but it is to say that um there's just so many different interpretations and some of them mutually exclusive that you can't believe one and believe all the others at the same time that someone's got to be wrong and someone's going to be bloody disappointed so yeah just a, a, another few random thoughts on why i'm not really a religious believer or don't really believe that god actually exists i just think it's largely forms of control and it's largely come from just people's imaginations but hey i'm just a rando guy in a car talking about it so take what you will from the video and i'll See you in the next one.